It is that of the 23rd day of July, 2018. It's a Monday, and I'd like to welcome you to the Money Charts channel. My name is Derek, and this is the Crypto Day Morning. And all trades, all bets, all wagers, and of the like, well, that's within your own risk, own reward. And that's the way gambling, investing, trading always is. And if you are not understanding the risk versus the reward aspect, at least, to enough to uh, avoid any major mistakes within your portfolio, I highly recommend that uh, one would do so because that's just one skill outside of finding situational events and plays that can uh, bring in good profit. So after we had this declining situation amongst the Bitcoin chart, the U V shape formation. However, the right-hand side of the U or V extended well past that level of resistance. So the story, the story was the typical situation where it breaks above a key resistance level quickly in a matter of a few minutes, not many though, three or four. And then within the next five, six, seven, eight minutes, it just slams down, breaking through short-term support and it broke through both the levels here at about 75.09 and then again at about uh, 74.87 extremely quickly. Not only did it break through that level, it also broke through the 74.33 level and for that matter it even broke through but marginally the 73.75. So the U-shape, V-shape formation within this but on a U or a V the letters stop where you started it before. No, no, this just keeps going. So therefore you have that down move from the uh, normal situation, which immediately found buyers to a major extent that they brought it well past the previous high. So down move, sideways consolidation in here, and then you have a beautiful up move and then grinding up, sort of uh, like we see here. Price action has also came up close to the 77.87 handle. What does that represent? Well, in the daily term time frame, that is a 23% Fibonacci retracement from the highs at the end of last year at around 20,000. And the lows, I'm going to say twice hit at around 6,000 or a little bit below from the February lows and this level. But on the mathematical sense, I look at anything below the very first line, the 23.6, to be super bearish. And that's another way of pointing that this thing has a long ways to go for this to uh, re re revert. Normally in a bear market, I would state that all uh, rallies are guilty until proven innocent because of the primary trend down. But the primary trend is showing a correction from another longer term primary trend of up. So that's like a mixed signal situation. But as the levels work, within these two lines from the 23.6 to the 38.2%, and that's gonna come in near 9,300. Well, still bearish below that line, but that is where it ends the bearishness on the retracement. If it's able to get above, hold above and stay above that level, and then the numbers from 9,300 to 12,443 brings it into a neutrality stage. And when you can get into a situation, when you have a longer term trend like this, which is higher, having this uh, neutral stage after this down move, I'd be pretty darn near confident that the uh, neutrality stage would move into the next one, which would be bullish, which is between 12,443 and about 15,000. That is a 61.8 and 76.4% level. When you're above the 76.4, that is super bullish. And then when you get above previous high and it gets above 20,000, that means you're in the stage of creating new legs higher. Next, next, let's take a look at ZEC, which is barely over that of 200 and has now made a move breaking out past the 18 average of highs. And this thing has just gotten going as it has managed to even get up to 208. Within this hour, it is 9.27 a.m. Eastern Time with 32 and a half minutes to go in the time frame. Price action is coming back to this level. So a very interesting time. Let's take a look at this on the 15 minute chart. As we can see, large green candles higher. 
And on the very short term, three minute time frame, as we can see the fast move up and down. So it brings an interesting situation. Is this rally for real? And you want to trace this, correct a very short term move. Technical analysis aspects, although a bit different on each time frame, can pretty much work about the exact same for general strategies, Fibonacci's, how the 18 average works out, retracements and all those types of things. So now it's at an area which it came from, and I think now we should go back to the 15 minute. The key area of resistance, actually I'm even go to the hourly time frame. Generally about 195. 195 is the key area here I think we need to hold. So it's pretty much there. And this thing has the potential, it's made the statement to get going. It's already giving a little bit of a discount fr uh, from that point. And uh, let's move on. Some interesting uh, setups, or not really setups, but how I'm looking at the cross against Bitcoin. First with POWR Power Ledger. Here was a statement making it out past this uh, mark here on July 18th up to uh, over 6,000. And here we stand now at 43.98. Making a move. Yeah, yes, went below the 18 average of lows. I don't care. It's in that general area. It still has to hold and stay below that. It hasn't done that yet and making the higher low from this point. But if we continue to see weakness uh, below, really that of 4,700 uh, for a significant period of time, or this thing just makes it even back down to uh, a break below 4,000, then there's gonna be a lot of concern that this, uh, not only the most recent rally from the uh, uh, mid-July area would be that of a failure, but even this potential for the July 1st rally from the low, thus the potential that for, from a failed move can oftentimes come fast moves in the opposite direction. THC is really back now where it came from. It's the spot where you had some major support at a below 800 and the 18 average of highs resistance area. I mean, it's scattered amongst the place, but we have 876 where it's bottomed in this area there. And then it had the top up to like 1335. So that's like a good 40% gain. And now we have big, big, big red candle down or big red, big red, big red, three in a row down to the 18 lows. And it didn't take long to get there. So this is again, that big correctionary test. If, uh, if it succeeds, you see it going higher than this has major potential. But if it doesn't and you get weakness, usually the story goes, you attempt to have a rally, you work damn hard, but you fail on that. And the correctionary phase is what decides if it's a pass or a fail. And it's not uncommon thereafter that again, to have a fast move in the opposite direction. The opposite of higher is that of lower. Moving on to 10X pay token. Well, pretty much the same story. Next up is KORE, that of CORE, which had several days consolidating amongst the Fibonacci level of 21,000 Satoshi. And it let, fell off from that level a few days ago, around the 20th, 21st, and has been red, red down, and is now since fallen about 20 percentile since that point. And it's been a big, big level of support. And the next key level of support is in at 56, based on Fibonacci. There's these 50% retracements and all these other areas that can most certainly find support. But if this thing can show any sign that this thing is going to find failure amongst here, then that is probably where it's going to go. And I still need to see more than this because I do not count out the fact that it could still be brewing up a failed breakdown, which is the situation where you break a key level of support noticeably and then you're going to relatively quickly after that. So that would, who knows where the bottom would be for such an event. It still could come down to 15,000 and finish it off just a little bit lower. I can only go down so, so much for the failed breakdown in this spot, but if it does such, it would quickly come back to the neckline and then back to its congestion area. I think the better way of looking at this might be within a three day time frame. And thus, you probably see it rally back up to 27,000 pretty fast, if it was to do that. Now, it might seem like it's a long ways down, and it is, but I've seen this happen before, and if I can see anything where this goes down, maybe we find resistance at 21.7 and it starts to roll down again, then yeah, I'll be talking about 5,600 as a realistic target. Okay, 
Okay, yeah, that's what I'm doing. Okay, cash. The uh, ticker symbol. Okay. So the same similar thing happened there as I was talking about that at the earlier part of this year, how it was showing weakness amongst the 2641 handle. And sure enough, it had a lot of support level there. So there was no failed breakdown. This was that real move. You had a move and we can see that it had a down target at 757 and left at 2641. It came down to about 1500. It rallied to a pierce below the Fibonacci. So it came back to that key area, not this time as support, but close to that as resistance. And in, t in technicality, it pierced below it. So when it had a low here, on December the 7th of 2441, and we're seeing a high here at the upper end at like uh, 2553, 2458 and such, then yeah, that is coming back. And then since then, it's been a grinding halt to the downside ever since the April Fool's rallies have come into place. Let's put this into perspective. It, May the 3rd, this has a high of 2481, and it stands today right now at about 900. So that is a differential of well more than, uh, well, 2x on its loss. So it's about 2x. It's about 62% down. 63% down. That is a very serious move. But it made a move at least at this stage to a pierce above 757. Nothing has ended this downtrend. In fact, as we look at it in its place, it managed to find support on timestamp 0629 where thereafter went sideways for a bit, establishing resistance uh, in around 1,200 Satoshi. And we can see that just recently, a few periods ago, a few days ago, it has managed to break down below that support. It really hasn't done too much as finding a key low, but it has held and stayed below it for a couple of days. Its low for the session was 800, which means it, that is only uh, 43 basis points above the key Fibonacci level. And it could very easily still have another leg lower. I'll be very interested to see how much of a move that may happen from here if, of course, support uh, manages to be found at this level. So when we take a look at this, this represents uh, what uh, would look like, let's see, a, uh, it looks like a 23.6% down move. But let me just try to recalculate this because I only got three lines in here and I should have four. So we have a high at uh, 19,489, 19,985. I'll just do 20,000 even. Let's take a look at the slow. And I'll need to delete that line because I'm just trying to move the mouse over. There should be a fast button where I could just delete having to want to draw. So we have major support in here at 142. So I'm going to put in even 120,000 and then that of 20,000. Well, 757, which is the number that I have there, represents a 61.8% Fibonacci down move. So therefore, the number below that would be 349. Let's bring this back to current scale. And let's put a line in here for 349 since it looks like it may go towards that level. Okay, so that would be its next support level if it fares, it fares again. From this point on the retracement, everything above 60, 56, 54 was super bearish. It was really unable to hold on to something, but it did hold on to its bullish trend when it hit the 2641. So therefore, it has been in that of a neutral situation by staying between that of 2641 and 757. So that's where it stands right now. And if it is unable to hold the uh, the nine, or yeah, this, if it's unable to hold seven five seven, then that would basically turn this into a complete failed rally from the uh, well, from the entire 2017 rally. Thank you for tuning into today's video, and have yourself a great day. Bye bye.